to Intro to Android App Reverse Engineering. In this video, we'll talk about the first um, exercise of solution. And so thanks for making it this far. And now comes the fun part of putting hands on the keyboard. So for this first exercise, if I can get the slide, um, and for all the exercises, I will be giving you a context that's listed in the workshop. Um, so you can really put yourself into the position of why are you reverse engineering? What are you trying to solve? And my hope is that this helps you figure out how to apply these different skills um, outside of this workshop and figure out when to use what techniques, tools, and understand the why behind what I'm trying to walk you through for each workshop. So for this first one, as is listed, um, in the workshop, you are a malware analyst for Android apps, and you need to determine if this app is doing premium SMS fraud, which means that it sends an SMS text message to a premium phone number, um, which means it's charging the user's bill, and it's doing that without disclosure and user consent. So one thing to know is that's gonna make it easier to work through this exercise is knowing what premium SMS fraud is. So as I said, it's a form of mobile billing fraud. Um, but what we're really looking for is three different things um, that the app has to do in order to qualify as premium SMS fraud. So it has to send an SMS message first off, and then it has to send an SMS to a premium number. So in the US and or North America in general, as well as Western Europe, premium SMS mobile billing is not as common, but in the rest of the world it is. And so if you don't know what premium or mobile billing is, it's one of the examples is like when you see those campaigns or ads that say to donate to earthquake reliefs, text from your mobile phone 55567, and that will charge $10 from your mobile bill and give it to whoever has registered that number, which you hope is the disaster relief organization. So they're usually short codes um, as a way to identify the premium number. And so the last and the third part for something to qualify as fraud is that they have to do those first two things without the user's knowledge and without the user's consent. Um, so they can't send it even if they disclose prior to the user being like, yep, I'm cool with you charging this amount by sending a text message to this number. So that's the context, but the goal for this first exercise is not to actually step all the way through. I want to break this very first one up into a few parts. So we're going to use the information covered in the starting points for reverse engineering and app entry point section of the workshop to break this process up into a couple steps. So for exercise one, you are just determining which Java class or classes within this sample application are you going to start your reverse engineering with once you get to that point. And the goal is to do this is to be really deliberate in our choices because it can be so exciting to start reverse engineering that you just sort of choose a place at will and go down a lot of different rabbit holes because the process of RE can be really fun too. So instead, I want to get us in the habit of making deliberate decisions and remembering what our goal is and thus choosing our starting point for reverse engineering based on the goal um, rather than oh, this is the first class that loaded in what I'm going to look at. So remember the question you're trying to answer is, is this application doing premium SMS fraud? So to figure this out, we're not going to start reverse engineering code just yet. You're going to use JDEX. And since this is the first time we're using JDEX in this workshop, I'm going to show you how to start it out. So here we are in our the VM for the workshop. And in the terminal, all you have to do is type jdex.gui because jdex is already installed. jdex is a Java decompiler or Android app decompiler. It's open source, it's free, which makes it great. It both has a command line option and a GUI. Here we'll be using the GUI. And so once you start it, you can then just, um, if you're not already there, go to the path for samples in the VM and that's where I've put a bunch of APK samples that we'll use in the exercise. And for this one, as I say in the workshop, we're studying tiecamera.apk. Um, so just open that up. And let it load. 
And so if you've never used JDEX before or looked at an Android app in a decompiler, the way it's broken up this APK is this first section is all the decompiled source code. So the Java or Kotlin code that made up the APK, they've decompiled it for you from the Dalvik bytecode. So it's back to, you know, Java-ish. Resources are all the extra files that are included in the APK. The most interesting for this part is probably going to be the Android manifest. Um, and then you also have um, the signatures that signed this APK and certificate. So at this point, if you want to give it a try, you can pause the video. Um, remember to think about each of the different sections we discussed in the, um, or I wrote, didn't discuss, in the where to start reverse engineering um, part of the workshop to think about which classes lead you to believe they'd be a good place to start reverse engineering. So go ahead, give this a pause, and when you're ready to talk through the solution, come on back and resume. Okay, welcome back. So let's get into how do we solve this. So re we remember the three things we need to find in order to decide this is premium SMS fraud. And so if we go back to our starting points and what we discussed about Android API calls, this is one of the easiest places to start. You cannot have premium SMS fraud without the app sending an SMS message. It's just one of the crucial parts to make it premium SMS fraud. And there's only a few different um, types of API calls that allow you to programmatically send a text message. Yes, these could be obfuscated. Yes, they could be called through what's called reflection in Java, but ultimately they have to call an API call. And so I list two of, I believe, it's either three or four of the most um, popular ways to do it. So I think there's four total in Android API. So these though are the two most popular that we see. And I think I list the other ones in the workshop, but send text message API call and send multi-part text message. That's two most common ways to programmatically send an SMS. So that's a good place to start is looking for any method calls to those or strings, things like that. Um, the next thing you'll look for is sending an SMS to a premium number. Uh, I generally find this is easier to look for based on either strings or um, finding one of the API calls first in section one. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that once you find an execution path, you may want to look for um, what's triggering it, but we're not quite there yet. So when I open up JDEX, I'm often, it's not fancy, going to use strings and method call searches to look for these API calls I'm interested in. So if we come back to JDEX over here, let me make this bigger. If we go up to tools at the top, oh, sorry, navigation, we're going to look at text search first. And this might take a minute as it's decompiling down here. Okay, now that we're back, I just want to skip ahead because it took a few minutes. So here we have a couple of options of how to search through this app. You have class, you have methods, you have fields, you have code, you have case insensitive. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for the most common send text message. And here we see that there are two places where the send text message API call is called. Um, and that is in the class comcp camera loading dot set or comcp camera loading um, in the method then send message. So comcp camera dot loading is definitely now a contender in my list for where I could start my search or which class I would open up in the decompiler. Um, another thing you can do is just look for SMS to begin with, and that will show you quite a few different strings associated with SMS that are probably interesting. So we already talked about com.cp camera about loading. So boot service could also be interesting for you. Um, R is a resource, so that's a button that they're including. So there's a couple different options we have here to start. The other way you could, beyond just string search or method search, is opening up the Android manifest. 
So as we talked about a little bit in foundations, um, and hopefully you know from trying to build your Android app, it, it manifests lists a lot of the basic components of the Android app. So here we see all the permissions that it's saying it needs to use. Um, and then we see activities, services, receivers, and things like that. So if you were to just scroll through these different components of um, or entry points, you could decide that, hey, just one of the entry points to the application is the best place for me to start um, because I know that's where it begins execution. In this case, I wouldn't say that's necessarily the best choice because we did see the send text message API call, but it's still a fine choice, especially as you're getting started and building up these gut instincts and that is only built through experience. So we have a, good, a couple different options. That was the only goal for this first exercise. And in the next exercise, we will pick up um, how to actually reverse engineer and determine whether or not this app is doing premium SMS fraud.